Hey guys, it's Cam here. Welcome back to the build room and we are in the final stretch of getting this 1977 Toyota Celica, aka Dufa, ready for its inspection for registration. We've got a laundry list of things that need to be done and I have a feeling we're gonna be culling a few of them as we get later on during the day. But I am praying that we get enough done to pass that inspection, but only time will tell. So stick around and check it out. Alright, so after multiple false starts, we are hoping that the third time is the charm on this one. So, we have a big list here, and uh, over half of those are really must-have items in the red at the top. The blacks we might just get away with, and the blues are kind of optional. So yeah, my plan is to start with the red items and then work my way down. So, first up, if we pop this bonnet, this is where we left it last week. So. Everything's pretty much done in here. We're 99% of the way. There's a couple of things. Firstly, the main thing that I want to address is the steering box adjustment, which I know will interest some of you guys. Other than that, I do have to fill up the washer bottle and um, hook up the washer jets and make sure that all works. We filled that up with uh, Sikaflex in the last episode. Um, again, not a practice I would recommend, but we've got to get this thing over and ordering a new O-ring for it might take months to come in. So yeah, once those two things are done, um, we're pretty much done in the engine bay other than a clean, because uh, the Radiator did spew stuff everywhere. I've done my best to clean this up with a bucket of water and a washcloth, but uh, I just couldn't get in everywhere. So this is gonna have to be hosed out, um, but to do that, I need to get it out into the driveway. I don't really wanna try and hose it in here because it just makes too much mess. So what I'll do is I'll fill this up now, and then we'll adjust the steering box, and hopefully while we're doing that, this won't leak. Just gonna throw some distilled water in it. That will be enough to see whether she's gonna leak. I'll clean up where I've spilt. And uh, then it's just a case of playing the waiting game. All right, we'll come back to that. Let's look at the steering box. All right, so the steering box is a recirculating ball type and uh, it has really just one adjustment mechanism and that is this screw on the top. Now, if you wanna know more about how recirculating ball steering box work, I actually disassembled the one from Violet Crumbles and we did a um, full clean up and reassembly uh, and that will show you all of the principles and you know, they're good to know on something like this. These are fairly common on old uh, Japanese cars, but if you just want to adjust it, all you're gonna to need to do is unlock this lock nut with a 14. That's tight. And you can use a flathead screwdriver to adjust the shaft. And what that will do is as you tighten it up, um, it will, reduce the clearances inside between the gears that mesh and in turn remove some of the free play. Now there's limits here. You'll get to a point where the steering box starts to bind if you uh, do it up too tight. So you'll dramatically increase the wear and you'll also make your steering notchy. Um, so, you know, there does come a point where the internals of these things are so worn, you are really just shit out of luck in terms of getting them running again without proper reconditioning. But I'm gonna do a quick adjustment on this one and we'll see how we go. So I'll start by backing this right off, just to give myself a bit of a feel. Uh, and then, yeah, lock that in place and just start turning it clockwise, which will tighten it. And you should feel it be fairly loose. And then when it starts to come into the contact with the gears inside, it's gonna tighten up quickly. You can keep jamming this down and keep putting turns on it, but you really are gonna tighten up too much and that's when it gets notchy and wears out. So we are gonna take it to a point where I start to feel that engagement and then maybe just give it a little bit of a further nip. There we go. That's feeling some pressure. I'm just gonna give it a quarter turn, just a quarter turn. And then if I just put a hand on the wheel, as I turn the steering wheel up here with my other hand, I should be able to feel the relationship. So I can basically hold the wheel and wiggle the steering wheel back and forwards about, I don't know, two centimeters. Um, that's not too bad as far as I'm concerned. Obviously I'd like no free play at all, so you have a really good feel on center, but at the end of the day, you're really talking about a steering rack there, not a steering box. So I'm just gonna leave that like that for now. It feels pretty good. I'll lock off the nut 
uh, and then once we've done a couple of other things, we'll get this on the ground, I'll be able to take it around the block and that will give me a much better feel for it once it's got the weight of the car on it. If it feels too tight, I'm gonna back it off because I don't wanna wear this thing out. Uh, but I feel like I've been fairly conservative there, so hopefully we've still got play, but it's not enough to upset the inspection, guys. So I've tightened up that lock nut, and then if we have a look over here, no leaks. So uh, yeah, pretty inexpensive repair, uh, a little bit dodgy, but it should do the job. I'm gonna top this off now, just to make sure I've got enough water for them to test the sprays when they inspect it. That'll do it. Oh yeah, and we've also got to fix this coolant hose because it's not low enough. And we've got brand new eight mil internal diameter coolant hose. We should be able to reuse the uh, existing clamps for that OEM look. Slip that over. And then now I want to go behind the cap. And what I'll do is I'll just zip tie it along the front here um, and it should Get that into a natural curve. Yeah, we'll zip tie it along the front, which should be pretty sweet. Being very careful with these fittings because they're so brittle nowadays. That looks good. One. Two, three cable ties, snip the ends off them. Um, a little bit of coolant there to uh, clean up, but other than that, looking pretty factory. All right, back to the windscreen washers. Take this panel off. Don't remember how many screws I put back into it, but it wasn't the full complement. Seems like four is the magic number. Got to reattach the uh, washer units. With those on, we can find our hoses. Just sit down in here. They should slide over. Mine will be nice and brittle. And then you've got to tilt it in front first. Uh, that wiper should be up like this in order to do this. I'm just going to take it off. That's the easy way to do it. Okay, it'll drop in now. Screws back in. Now we can put our wiper on. And while we're here, I might just do the blades as well. And we've got Trico TRP560 uh, replacements. These aren't, they don't replace the whole head because these are obviously stainless steel. They tend not to degrade and they match. So I don't want to change them to black painted metal. So yeah. Replacement inserts, and then we just go, done. Now, before I get too excited and test these, if you put on new wiper blades, make sure you clean your windscreen properly before you uh, use them. Otherwise, you'll have bits of dirt and grime that can potentially uh, cut up the rubber inserts the first time you use them, especially if a car's been sitting like this thing for a long time. And now we get to test them out. <laughs> Might need to bend that one down. Meh. And. Ah, oh, beautiful. All right, now just get all this water off the car before it rusts it. <laughs> Promise you we're not gonna leave it in bare metal forever. Pinky swear. All right, so that means we have sorted out the steering free play. We filled the washer, we've installed the washer jets. Um, we didn't have the coolant overflow hose up here, but we get a tick for that one as well. We've done the wiper blades, but other than that, that looks like all of the red items in the engine bay are done. We're squared away. So, um, I still do have to give this a wash. So I want to get it on the ground while there's still daylight. Um, but before I do that, there's a couple of things. When we put the new struts from Violet Crumbles in this thing, obviously we moved to the King Springs that were already installed in those. 
These are sport low king springs for the RA28. So now their car actually sits with a bit of a rake on it. So the, the rear is still probably standard height. There are aftermarket springs in there, but they seem like they're aftermarket heavy duty, not aftermarket lows. Uh, and now this is low. So I don't think it's that much of an issue, but I have heard about people getting caught up on having too much rake. So we've got the car in the air. It's a relatively simple task. We've got the springs that were supposed to go into violet crumbles there. So we might as well throw them in now and have it all set to relatively the same height. We just want the jack underneath the diff to support it. This way it won't drop either side when we take the shocks off it. Wheel off. Shock off. All right, now when we let the jack down, this should drop enough to get the spring out. There we go. It's not captive anymore. Okay. Now this is the spring out. It has a rubber insulator and the bottom of the spring is indexed. See, it's got a big difference here. There's a end of a spring here and then the next one up has a big step. Whereas if you look at the other end, they're close together and ground down. So they kind of sit flat, right? That's the top. That side up and it goes into this insulator as well. And this insulator is just a solid piece and it's flat the whole way around. For our new springs, we have the same setup. We have one end that is ground flat and one end that is indexed. Insulator goes in the top. The spring perch here is also indexed. You can see that indent there. That is for the end of the spring to sit in. So you put the rubber insulator in. That's also indexed. You can see there it is broken, but I don't care. And you slide the new spring in. And when you put it in place, just make sure you keep that indexing where it's supposed to be. For starters, if you don't, you're gonna have the car higher than you need it to be. Um, but also this spring can move around and make noise and things like that, which is why it has an insulator and why it has an index. So, you know, all these features are here, keep them in the car. Now we just need to put the uh, shock back on. And to do that, we should jack the rear end back up until we get it close enough to slip on. few aggaduggers there and then we just check to make sure the spring is seated so this has got a little bit of wiggle room at full droop but uh, nothing too crazy it is a lowered spring what do you expect so yeah that's in place happy with that I'm gonna do the other side um, there's no need to show you that one so I'll do that and then we'll get the wheels back on and then we can get this thing on the ground all right so the wheels are back on but before we drop it on the ground uh, I forgot about this guy which is the stone tray um, this one actually came off, for those of you that have been watching the entire series, came off the tetanus tip job, that blue wreck that we uh, pulled apart in a day or two and uh, then shipped off to the uh, big old car farm in the sky. It was extremely rusty. I had to wire brush this entire thing and then I did multiple coats, coat after coat of rust converter, got it back to something that was in reasonable shape and then just gave it a couple of quick coats of high temp paint. The reason I didn't go overboard on this is time, really. I wanted it on for the pits. It obscures any sins that might be underneath the car. But yeah, we'll get this on. I'm gonna do one final check for any leaks and things like that. I might just give them a sneaky wipe down if there are any. Um, because we're probably not going to leak that much oil between now and tomorrow morning. And then we're going to get this thing on the ground. All right, looking good. We do have a leaky drain plug on the gearbox. I didn't replace the crush washer on that when we we're putting this motor in because I didn't think this was ever gonna stand a chance of being on the road anytime soon. Never say never, it would seem. So I am gonna have to replace that, but um, I'm not gonna pick one up tonight. So we're just gonna clean it off and uh, hope for the best tomorrow morning. All right, so we're on the ground. We'll get up the driveway, give it a wash. 
take it for a quick spin just to check that everything's working, and then we'll bring it back into the garage. All right, seems to be drying off pretty well. Doesn't look like we've got any leaks. Um, once it cools down, I'll just take the radiator cap off and make sure that we haven't uh, dropped a whole bunch more water because um, that was a pretty decent run. Really got it right up to temp. You could see it getting hot and then the thermostat opening and it cooling straight back down. So it feels like it's okay. It's a little higher on the dial that I remember it as a kid, but I'm pretty sure I didn't run a thermostat as a kid. So that might be uh, part of the reason why. All right, so now it's time to look at the rest of the list. So we're starting to look pretty good here on the reds. Um, the rest of the reds here, a lot of them are pretty easy. I mean, pedal rubbers, steering wheel gear knob, should be nothing out of the ordinary there unless the steering wheel fights me coming off. The spare tire and the jack and all that sort of thing. Um, I have the jack and everything here. The spare tire, I just have to shoot out tomorrow morning and grab one off one of the other cars. So pretty confident there. What I'm gonna do now is put the radiator support and grill and all that back together. Um, that way the engine bay and the outside of the car will be pretty much done other than a rust situation. And then we can get through the rest of the red and move into black and blue section. All right, so we've got a good looking set of gills. Now it's on to the interior. All right, so the first thing that I wanna do here is make some room. So I'm gonna take the steering wheel off first because these old bus wheels are absolutely gigantic. Just take off the cap at the front, 19 mil socket. Easy with an impact. And then just generally speaking, we should just be able to hit the back of the wheel just softly, it doesn't have to be hard. And just that slight movement will pop the steering wheel off like that. You can get in there and pull really hard and what you do is you sort of twist it off center and it binds up and it actually makes your job harder. So you know, less haste, more speed. Um, hitting the thing harder isn't necessarily better. I'll also take the uh, gear knob off now just so that I don't forget to replace it with a new one. It's a good start. Plenty more room. I would like a much smaller wheel and I actually have one, um, but it's not exactly period correct. And I don't know if um, it would pass the pits. It's from the US and um, I don't know if that would meet Australian standards and it would be accepted. So we're just gonna run with a good stock wheel that I've got um, and uh, hopefully that passes. One of the things that's annoyed me a lot is this thing squeaks. So I'm gonna put some WD-40 in here, but I've also just noticed that there is a raised section around the um, steering column cover, which it looks like it's heated up and warped and is actually pushing out and touching on the rim of the wheel. I might just buzz that back with the Milwaukee die grinder and um, clearance it a little bit and hopefully that'll get rid of that awful squeak. All right, with that out of the way, the next thing I wanna look at is the center console. So. The issue with the center console is, obviously there's a bunch of broken parts missing here, but this is the old loom for a radio of some description. I don't know what it was, but yeah, it's pretty nasty wiring. Um, this is a positive, and I would say it's a full-time positive directly from the ignition and it's just been cut. So that's just a blown fuse waiting to happen. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna remove the console and then with the console out, what I can do is 
try and get this panel, which is off another center console that I um, rescued out of the tetanus tip job. Um, so I'll see if we can get that into there. And then there is another panel that goes down the bottom here that I can potentially put the demister button into. Um, so if I can drop this demister switch in here, that's the only thing I need working. I don't need a radio. Um, I just need the demister working so that it'll pass the inspection. So yeah, I'll start by getting this console out because uh, I think this thing will be easier to screw in from the back, um, which means I need the console out and then I'll drop it all in as one unit. And hopefully as we slip it in, I'll just plug the demister button in and we'll be good to go. We got a wire caught there. All right, that's out. All right, I have exercised the demons. Get rid of that. Now we've just got the standard wiring loom here and this is the antenna. So it's starting to get late now uh, and that means I really don't have time to keep positioning the camera and it's actually really quite difficult in the cabin anyway. There's not a lot of room for stuff. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna zip forward in time. Um, I'm gonna work in the background and I'll show you what the finished product of the center console end looks like and then we'll sort of just step through the build as we go. All right, so one center console back in place. Now I had to change over to this, which is out of the tetanus tip job. Um, the reason being is this area on the bottom of the other one was broken so the buttons wouldn't push in. And so we should have a working demister now. We don't have a radio, but we don't need one. The main thing is I just wanted to cover that up so it didn't look so bad. Now, next, I'm gonna clearance that. Just gonna use a flap disc on the Milwaukee die grinder. I'm gonna put some rubbers on the pedals down there. Um, there is a number there, 31321-YE010. Um, yeah, two of those. Then after that, I'm gonna get the new steering wheel on. And then if you look over there, you can see that the um, there's obviously six by nine speaker holes in those door trims, and that one is uncut. This one, however, has a gaping big hole in it. I don't really want to have that showing, so I'm also going to put some new door cards on both doors um, and then cinch that all up. I'll also throw the gear knob back on. And then I think that's pretty much it for what I'm going to do for the interior. I'm not going to worry about the charge and the oil light at the moment. If they pick me on that, they pick me, but it involves pulling the whole instrument cluster out and I just don't have time for it at the moment and it's a pain in the ass job that I really don't want to do. So yeah, let's do all of that in one run. I'll see you in a bit. All right. We got new door trims in. We have the center console together, uh, door trim on this side as well. We got the new steering wheel, sands any breakages. Uh, we've also got new pedal rubbers. And then for the final piece, we need the gear knob. Oh man, check that out. Love it. Love to see it. Um, matches in with the wood grain on the wheel and on the center console. So how can you go wrong? Anyway, it looks awesome. So uh, let's see what's left on the board. All right, so that just leaves us with the spare tire and the jack stuff, which are, I'll get tomorrow morning. Seat belts are still unknown. I'm gonna leave them until tomorrow morning when I can see in the cold light of day. We don't have a steering lock. I'm probably not gonna do that one. Definitely not gonna do the alarm. This thing does have a kill switch, but uh, alarm's just too much work for tonight. And major rust, look, I might bodge you that up first thing in the morning as well. Dash fascia and instruments we're not doing and a pillar trim doesn't really matter. If I have time, I'll do it, but you know, who cares? But other than those things for tomorrow morning, we are through the list. So that means that I can go and get some sleep and uh, hopefully we'll be up in time and we won't miss the third inspection on this bad boy. All right, we're back. Uh, it is morning o'clock. Um, so we have some time. Uh, we are going to get the spare in first. Of the many, many Toyotas that I have and have laying out the front, we have managed to find a spare from the Datsun. Anyway, it holds air and it's got road legal tread. So it should do the job. It's also skinny enough to fit uh, underneath that board, which is not an easy task actually. Pretty sure the main purpose of this thing today is going to be to look like it might be a viable uh, spare tire, even though it's not, whilst also covering the huge amounts of rust in this tire well. All right, that's nice and secure. Put him to bed. Good to go there. Now we just need 
the jack paraphernalia. It's nice and rusty. It's pretty handy. And this can just sit loose, I guess. All right, that should normally hinge up like that. But yeah, should look something like that. That is also closing a little bit easier now that it's had some time. All right, now it's time for a quick test drive to make sure I didn't break anything last night. that was full of wind uh, touch wood no major issues so let's look at the board springs steering the rad support uh, washer bottle washer jet spare tire jack etc done demister pedal rubber wiper blades steering wheel and gear knob all done so all of the red items are complete in the black we have Seat belt, I'll have a look at them next. Steering lock, not doing. Alarm, not doing. Major rust, I'll probably throw some bog in that now as well. Uh, we got the rear view mirror changed. We did the console panel. Um, we cleaned the interior. I've got to do the glass as well. Uh, and then if I get time, I'll do the A-pillar trim. We're not doing the dash face shoot instruments. So really there's not much to do and we have made it in time. Is it gonna be enough to pass the pits? Eh, I don't know. Um, there's obviously some things that still really should be done. I just don't know if they need to be done. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to take you guys for a ride down to the inspection center, uh, mainly because I don't wanna have cameras running or um, roll up with a bunch of GoPros and stuff on the car and potentially um, get the nose out of joint of the guys who are inspecting it. The bottom line is it's just not worth upsetting people when I really want this to pass first time. So I will be back soon and we'll see how this thing went. Wish me luck. All right, so we're back. Um, it's actually night time and uh, a couple of days later. Went and got it inspected. It took a little bit longer than I thought, so I had to go straight to work afterwards, so we're getting back to it now. So this is what I managed to get done before I went. First of all, didn't manage to get the seat belts done. They went over like this. So you can see there's a fair amount of sun fade there if I get it in the right light. You know, very light on there. Now the reason I didn't change these is I had um, in my collection of seat belts, I had one quite good seat belt, which I could have put on the driver's side, but then I didn't have another decent belt. They're all worse than this, which meant I would have had a good one on one side and a garbage one on the other. So I felt it better just to go with consistent and hope no one noticed. I also fixed the A-pillars. Now you may not be able to see that easily, but I basically cut all of the old material off and then I just threw some 100 mile an hour tape down it. It was just something that took five minutes and um, really did neat it up when you were sitting in the driver's seat. Now, in terms of the rust, I just got in here and bogged through the entire thing um, and then threw some primer over it. I did the same on the door and this was very last minute. This was basically wet when I pulled out of the driveway and dried on the way to the inspection. And as I said, I didn't manage to get an alarm in this thing, neither did I manage to get a steering lock on it, which meant even though the car felt pretty good to drive, um, I wasn't particularly confident. It was an interesting process. It was far removed from the old process that I remember when we used to go over the pits, and that was you'd actually work alongside the guy inspecting the car, and they would usually, um, you know, have you move the steering wheel so they could check bushes and stuff like that. They'd have you honk the horn, turn on the lights, use the windscreen wipers, all those sorts of things. So you were kind of like their second set of hands. And it was good because that would show you some of the things that were wrong and some of the things that you needed to correct. Not like that anymore. You basically hand over your keys, they put you in a waiting room. So yeah, waiting, waiting, waiting. Guy comes back out, got his clipboard in hand, um, asked me a few questions around the car. He wanted to know how long it took to strip back to bare metal. He wanted to know how long I'd owned it and a few other things. And then he gave me the news. And the news was that it passed. So not only has it passed its inspection on the first time, but since then I've managed to get down to the licensing center and it's got plates. So this thing is now 100% legal to drive. So yeah, I am absolutely stoked. I just cannot believe it. Um, I don't know whether they missed the items that I didn't do or whether some of those things just aren't important to them anymore. I know that I would not have got that over as a 
you know, 18 year old, 19 year old kid trying to get these things passed. So I am on cloud nine at the moment. Um, I haven't been able to wipe this smile off my face for uh, a couple of days now. Um, every time I come out into the garage and look at this thing, I'm just absolutely stoked and surprised that someone would let it on the road. So yeah, we're not finished with it yet though, because I did rush to get it over the line. There's a lot of things that we need to do. In next week's episode, I think we're gonna tackle the interior. There's a few things I wanna do that'll just make it nicer for me to drive, and I wanna get them out of the way first, and then we've got some more boring work on the body that I might do in the background, um, and then just show you guys the finished product which means we've just got the usual stuff to go. So I'm gonna to link to the Violet Crumble stuff here, and I'm also gonna put a link to the full Doofus series here. Other than that, I just wanna say thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on The Build Room. Bye for now.